Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing great. In this playlist, we are actually discussing about designing the serverless solutions with Azure Durable Functions. If you have not watched my previous video, please go and watch that video first so that you will be understand how the basic idea of Azure Durable Functions, how it is different from normal Azure Durable Azure Functions. So those all things are serverless platforms, but there are little bit different difference between uh, durable functions and uh, normal Azure functions. So uh, in my previous video, I have already shared a small architecture. We will be designing a feedback system. So we will from now onward, we will be concentrating on the code more. So if you want to know how that design has been made, you should go and watch that previous video, then come to this video. My name is Anshuman Dixit. I'm an Azure Cloud Native web application developer. So how exactly will be processing? Let me share the demo. So this I have already created and shared with you in my previous video. So we will be dealing with this starter function today. Now to trigger this starter function, we will be using a tool named as Postman. Why? because I really don't have time to create that UI for now. For now, we will be passing all the data from data as a JSON, JSON value uh, through Postman. Now we will be using an HTTP trigger over here so that it will act as an API. Now, what is the functionality of starter function? Starter function will always gonna be the responsible for function to invoke the orchestrator function, that's it. It will not do any other things and now from now onwards we will be concentrating on those things only then once that orchestrator function will uh, call then it will call the feedback form data and it will store it in the sql db and the flow will go on now i'm sharing with you the code base right now now if my screen is still visible you can see that this is a Visual Studio uh, solution. I have created one Azure Common Helper class over here. We will discuss it uh, in in next couple of videos. Uh, right now, it's not needed. Now, I will be creating one feedback system function. So it will have all the functions, Azure functions. So I'll create a new project over here. I'll go over here. I'll just wait. I'll go to Azure Functions. I'll select one. I will use naming convention as feedback system app. Now I'll hit and click. As it's a HTTP trigger functions, we'll be using this. So what exactly it does? It will create a boilerplate code for you, uh, or you can go and you can create a blank solution it's 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 really depending upon you only now to make sure that you have the authorization label over here there are three type of authorization label if you are choosing anonymous then everyone can actually access your azure function if you are using functions it's a security player uh, so that uh, it will give you a unique key now whenever the functions will be getting called you have to pass that key as a query string, query parameter, so that it will understand that, yes, this user has that authorization. Now, if you will select admin, you have to give username and password for that one. So for now, I will select function, but running this entire function in localhost, it's really not needed. But once you deploy all these things to Azure, it is really vital. Now I will create on create. We will go one by one now. Now this is the boilerplate code. Uh, I'm just briefly telling you what exactly this is. Uh, this is the function name. It it is an attribute given by Azure Functions so that Azure Functions will be able to understand that yes, this is the naming convention we are following. Now this is the HTTP trigger attribute so that it will be triggered by only HTTP request. It will generate an API URL. So basically it will act as an API right now now if i'll go over here i don't want to name 
my functions as function one. I will give a good name. I'll go over here. I will create a new Azure function. Azure function. I'll select Azure functions template over there. Now I will select a starter function. Okay. Now as as it will start the entire orchestrator functionality, its naming convention is starter function. Now it should ask me what kind of trigger you want to use. I want to use HTTP trigger. I will select over here. I will add it. Now let's just wait so that yes, the boilerplate code gets generated. Now I will go and I will delete the function one. Now, what exactly this starter function will do? First thing, it will collect the data from the request body of the URL, which is actually calling this one. Now, second, it will call the orchestrator functions and it will pass the feedback form uh, values, feedback form data as an input parameter. These two things only will be done by this starter function. Now, I will uh, definitely going to delete all these things. Let's delete and let's write our own code. I will write string. I'll create one response message so that it will be easier for us to pass something later. String dot empty. Now I'll create as orchestrator ID or ID. So what exactly it will do? Once you will uh, invoke the orchestrator function, it will generate an unique ID so that this will be stored inside your storage queue and uh, it will be used as a signature for this uh, invoking things. Now, once the orchestration ID got complete, now I have to generate a class file to deserialize my feedback form data. For that, I will create a folder over here. Always follow naming conventions properly. It will be helpful for you. Model. Then I will go. I will add a class over here. So this is this should be collecting the feedback. So I will write it like message feedback for. Now I will select class file. I will create it now by default uh, it's not allowing me to access the classes in public so I'll create it public now um, uh, suppose I have four functionality so I will create those properties over here prop so this is the uh, shortcut if you want to create any property you can write it like prop in visual studio you can write it like prop then tap tab it will create the functionality over here. I will choose it like string. This will be my first name. First name. I'll copy everything. It's just a class file so that it will create an object from the request body. That's it. So that C sharp will able to handle these things and able to understand. So these are my feedback data last name then i will create it as email address then i will create it as feedback message feedback okay now i'll save it i'll go over here i'll just try to copy this thing i'll have an reference over here using this one dot model or this one what's my function name feedback system app feedback system app dot model now i'll go over here i'll just try to deserialize the data coming from the postman where Message body. Now 
I wait. This will be a stream reader. I will use stream reader over here. Stream reader. It will be a request dot body. Now dot read to end async. I am using async await async over here because I have already created this function as async task. Now this function will wait over here until and unless the body gets body doesn't get created, it will not go further. Now for that reason, I am using a bit. Now I want to deserialize it to message feedback form. Message is equal to I will use JSON convert Newton sub dot JSON library over here if it doesn't get in initialized uh, in your azure functions you can definitely go to the nuget packages and you have to download it manually now it already has in here dclis object i'll just pass the type of class i want to deserialize and uh, this will be my body so what exactly it does this two line will collect the data as a string this will convert it as a string now this will pass it as a class file so that it will be able to it will be good to use in c sharp classes and all now if we already have a message so i will check that thing if we already have message now message is not equal to null then i will go and i will call the orchestrator function why i have uh, created a comment over here in this video we will be only dealing with the startup functions in the next next video we will be discussing about the orchestrator function so right now our focus is to just invoke this starter function and we should see whether we are getting this message or not that's it now i can actually return something over here like uh, suppose if i'll create it like this if i if message is not equal to null i'll add over here then i will have a ternary operator it will give us new object result response message response message should be message got created now if i will go over here in error i have to pass something i will write it like uh, maybe something went wrong that would be fine for us now something went wrong once this thing gets complete let's build it okay you need to you need to set your project as a startup project so for that you need to go over here right click go to here set as startup project Now once that got completed, I'll create, I'll rebuild the entire application and I will try to run it. Now if everything goes right, it will give us an URL so that I, we will be able to invoke it. Let's wait so that we can get the URL. Now it's building. Now see this url we get so we don't have the function key over here i remember i have already told you that to to invoke this url you need the function key why because i have already used something over here like authorization label dot functions but in localhost you don't need it this but once you will deploy this thing to azure you definitely go for it if 
time permits i will definitely going to show you in my couple of next videos so so that you can be able to deploy it now go to here this is my postman this will be my sample ui i can say so here in body i will be creating something now this is my feedback message uh, feedback message json now i want to invoke over here if i will go i have pasted now the level is post over here the access level now i will go and i will click on send now okay we got that message got created but i don't have any breakpoints over here so that you will not going to be able to understand how this thing is working now i have created one breakpoint let's see if this thing is heading to the breakpoint or not now this got hit to the breakpoint i will just run it one by one so that you will be able to understand now see the request body has the parameters over here now it will read it and it will store it in a string format over here if i will go just one step further you will be able to understand that this message body has a string line over here now i want to parse it so i have used newton sub json library to deserialize it now i already got a message object over here now it passed it deserialized and it uh, took all those things from the message body now if the message is not null we will be dealing with this thing in the next video we will be calling the orchestrator function and we will be passing this message object to that function so that it will further process all the procedures now for now i'll just return it so that you will be able to understand that yes it is showing us that 200 ok is coming 200 ok is the status so that uh, so that ui will understand that everything goes fine in the api level so it's the web standard pattern we follow web protocol we follow now this is the message we have created and we have sent so now our starter function got created successfully in the next video we will be doing the orchestrator functions and we will be further proceeding for to create the entire system thank thanks thanks everyone happy learning and thanks for your love and support please like comment and subscribe